MS symptoms oftentimes remind me of a web where they're interconnected and one symptom can worsen another. In this video, I'm going to share with you a trifecta of three symptoms that hang together. I'm going to explain to you how we can leverage one to make the other one improved. If you'd like to better understand how to untangle MS symptoms, stay tuned because I'm going to start that learning right now. Howdy. Thanks for learning about MS with me, Aaron Boster. I started this YouTube channel to help my own MS clinic patients learn between visits. And it's my hope that through these videos, I can help you learn too. It's been my observation over the last decade and a half caring for people with MS that three symptoms tend to band together and one can negatively or positively impact the other. These symptoms include depression, which is twice as likely to occur in the setting of multiple sclerosis as we see in the general population. Pathologic fatigue, one of the leading causes of loss of work in MS, and arguably one of the most challenging invisible symptoms to explain to others. And lastly, cognitive impairment or cog fog. When we try to help someone with MS in clinic who's struggling with depression, we are obligated to look deeply into their energy levels and their cognitive status. If we only work on depression in isolation, oftentimes we're not very successful. It's been my observation that if you work on improving fatigue, you'll see the depression improve. And if you can optimize their cognition, oftentimes this also has a positive impact on their mood overall. It works in other directions as well. If I'm trying to tackle cognitive impairment, I have to look at depression. There's a very common phenomenon in MS called pseudo-dementia. Pseudo is Greek for similar to, but it ain't. And dementia means I don't think as well as I used to. So pseudo-dementia, for all intents and purposes, looks like the person's having a dementing illness, like in Alzheimer's, they can't remember stuff. But in reality, it's being driven by their undertreated depression. Now, follow me here. If you treat the depression, the cognitive problems evaporate. And this is an important take-home. Likewise, if we work on energy levels, those don't just help energy for moving around, they help energy for thinking. And so by working on fatigue and by working on depression, we can positively impact cognitive impairment. Lastly, if we're dealing with fatigue, all too often, all too common in MS, we have to look at the whole picture. If the person has any inkling of depression, and we treat it, we'll see that the energy levels typically rise. Similarly, if we improve cognitive fatigue uh, through implementing daily naps or using stimulant medications or engaging in exercise, there's a host of things we can do to improve cognitive fatigue. This pays dividends in the generalized pathologic fatigue the person experiences. So, in summary, MS symptoms remind me of a web and they're oftentimes interconnected. And I want to call out these three symptoms, depression, fatigue, and cognitive impairments that all sort of band together. When you're working on one, I strongly suggest that you have to consider the other two to have ultimate success. Once again, my name is Aaron Boster, and thank you for learning about MS with me. If you like this video, feel free to give it a like. And if you'd like to hear more videos like this one, please take a moment to subscribe to the channel. Lastly, I'd love to hear from you. What has been your experience in dealing with depression, fatigue, and cognitive impairments? And do you find that these symptoms hang together? Please share your experiences and your successes in the comments down below. Until my next video, take care.